What do drone strings do for your guitar playing? Drone sounds boring, but this technique couldn't be any further from boring. And in today's show, I'm going to teach you all about it. Hey, Tech family, welcome to episode 225 of the Acoustic Tuesday show. This show is designed to inject your guitar journey with a weekly dose of fun, focus, progress, and inspiration. Speaking of fun, today you're going to hear from a TAC family member who's going to share with you just how powerful fun has been in his guitar journey. And you're going to see which guitar lick the TAC family is working on today. It's entitled Dungeon Master, and it includes drone strings. Plus, your weekly dose of acoustic news awaits you, and it includes two artists who use drone strings to their advantage. Speaking of, go ahead and grab your guitar and let's try something new. I wanted to kick off today's show with a bit of an experiment. This is something that's been rattling around my brain for some time, and I thought, you know what? Today is the day to try it out. You know, every Acoustic Tuesday, I show you what guitar lick the TAC fam is working on. And I thought to myself, you know, usually there's a lesson behind the lick. So I wanted to try this new segment entitled Lesson Behind the Lick. So you get a little bit of background as to what are the inner workings of the guitar lick? So you can take the concept, so you can take the inner workings and apply them to the greater range of your playing. So in this segment, Lesson Behind the Lick, I want to divvy it up into four chunks. First, I'll tell you what the concept is. Second, I'll share with you what it does for your playing, what it offers you. Third, I'm going to share with you why it works, some of the, the theoretical aspects behind it. And then lastly, I'm going to show you some examples so you can see the concept take different forms. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. The concept we'll be discussing today is using a drone string. What does using a drone string offer your playing? Well, it offers three distinct things. Number one, it adds body to whatever you're playing. It fills up musical space. So you sound almost more complete as a solo guitar player. The second thing it offers is the ability for you to experiment with the scale in a musically meaningful way. And the third thing that it offers is an outlet for creativity when it comes to solo guitar. It's a really wonderful way to sit down and create and create something that sounds pretty darn good all by itself. Okay, so why does a drone string work? Well, a drone string is a musical reference to the key that you're playing in. It's a constant musical reference to the key that you're playing in. So what it does is it takes the scale that you could be using and when you pair it with that drone string, all of a sudden the notes that you're using make a little bit more musical sense. They almost have a little bit more emotion behind them. And I'm going to show you a quick, a quick example of what I mean. I'm going to play a D minor scale by itself. Just I'm going to select some notes from a D minor scale and it'll sound neat. And then I'm going to add a drone string. And what I want you to notice is how much more impact those single notes have. Here's how it would sound. Again, I'm going to kick things off with single notes in a D minor scale without a drone string. Here goes nothing. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the drone string. Here's how that would sound. And right away, you can hear how it really does add some body to what you're playing. And most importantly, it creates more of an emotional pull for the notes that you are playing. Now let's go ahead and move on to some examples of how this can actually manifest in your playing, how you can actually use it. And I kind of gave you a sneak peek there, but I want to dig into that a little bit more and kind of tell you what is happening. So I'm going to play again in the key of D minor, and I'm using a D note as my drone string. Now you'll notice that I actually took the low E string of my guitar and I dropped it to a D note. So I can get that nice full uh, uh, 
low D sound on the bass end. So here's how it would sound with a low D drone string in the key of D minor. I'll just play a quick little passage and then we'll move on to some more examples. Cool, so that sounds great in D minor, but can you use it in other keys? Of course you can use it in other keys, we'll get there in a moment, but you can also use it with different tonalities. I'm using minor because it sounds kind of cool and moody, but let me go ahead and show you what it sounds like in a major key. I'm gonna use that same low D string as my drone, but instead of playing a D minor scale, I'll be playing a D major scale. Here's how that would sound. So again, that's what I mean about the drone adding, uh, being the drone allowing you to pull more emotion out of the notes. It's this constant bed of rhythm, this constant bed of, of tone that you can play over that makes what you play a little bit more musically meaningful. Now I did mention that you can use this in other keys and that's actually the second example that I have for you. You know, any of the open strings that you have on your guitar are awesome for being a drone string. I use the key of D because I have this nice fat low D string. But I can, again, play in other keys. If I wanna play in the key of A, well, I'll just use my A string as the drone. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and play the A string as my drone, and then I'm gonna play an A minor scale on the G string. That would sound like this. Again, that same A string would work in a major tonality as well. Same exact thing, but instead of A minor, I'm gonna play in A major. That would sound like this. So again, these examples, I, I want you to take and apply them to your own playing. If you wanna play something in the key of E, use the low E string as a drone, so on and so forth. Essentially, whatever key you're playing in, go ahead and match that key with a drone string, okay? It's a great way, again, as I explained, to experiment with solo guitar pieces and overall, just be creative in a little bit more musically complete way. Okay, the final example I have for you, uh, both of these examples I've used thus far is essentially using it in a finger style way, but you can actually use this in uh, flat picking as well. And the other common misconception is that a drone has to be lower than what you're playing. And both of the examples I've played thus far, the drone string has been low, filling out the bass end of the spectrum doesn't always have to be the case. And I'm gonna show you something here in the key of G, and I'm actually gonna use a drone string that is higher, okay? I'm gonna fret the D string. Actually, I'm gonna fret the A string. Actually, I'm gonna fret the A string. I'm gonna be playing a G major scale on the A string. And I'm gonna use the D and the G string as my drone notes. Okay, now this opens up a whole nother can of worms as to why you can use the D string as well. I don't necessarily wanna go there today because I don't have time to go dive into the full theory aspect, but just know this. I'm gonna use that G string as kind of my key reference, but the other note you can use as a drone happens to be the fifth degree of whatever key you're playing in. That's another solid emotional note. It, it's, a, it's a note of stability, which allows you to, again, use it as a drone string. So again, I don't wanna to get too much in the weeds here, but again, what I'm gonna be doing is playing the A string, fretting the A string, and I'm gonna be using the D and the G as a drone, okay? I'm gonna be playing a G major scale 
on the A string. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on a, a G note. And here's how that would sound. I'm gonna use cross picking for this. So there you can see drone strings that are actually higher than the fretted note. They work to the same effect, but add a little bit of a different timbre to what you're playing. Okay, so now you know the ins and outs of the drone string. The Tuesday Tack Guitar Lick Challenge contains a drone string. It's actually a key of D minor lick using drop D tuning. So if you're playing your guitar right now, go ahead and, and drop that low E string to a D so you can best prepare yourself for this lick. Now, every single day within Tony's Acoustic Challenge, we rotate between one of the five essential categories of guitar improvement. On Mondays, we do a technique challenge. Tuesdays is a guitar lick challenge. Wednesdays, an improvisation challenge. Thursdays, a rhythm guitar challenge. And Fridays, a chord transition challenge. It just so happens to be Tuesday. The Tack family is working on a guitar lick today, and here is exactly what they're working on. I hope you're ready to go to the dungeon. Yes, your Tuesday Tack guitar lick challenge is entitled Dungeon Master. It's a lick in the key of D minor using drop D tuning, and it's using the low strings. This lick has a ton of emotion. It's kind of a mood setter, and it's just a really fun lick to explore. Let me go ahead and play it for you so you can hear it, and then I'll show you some variations and some ways that you can use this as a compositional tool. Here's how it sounds. <laughs> As you can hear, it's quite a moody lick, and it almost kind of hints at uh, a Tool song. I can't actually remember which one. Lateralis? I don't know. Uh, that wasn't the intent, but I kind of hear that as I, as I play through it more and more. Anyways, I want to show you how you can use this as a compositional tool uh, because, well, it's just pretty darn fun. Uh, but first, if you want to learn this note for note, uh, TAC fam, all you have to do is sign in. This is your daily challenge. Click on Start Challenge. That'll go right to the teaching video. Once you get it under your fingers, once you get comfortable with it, you can move to the Play Along video. Pick a speed that works for you. And don't forget to click on that tab icon in the lower right-hand corner. That'll allow you to pull up the tab right next to the video, and you can learn it from there. You can see it written. You can hear it being played. You can see it being played and kind of Combine those things to get this lick really under your fingers and get it into a usable status in your guitar world. Okay, so this lick, there's really, there's not a lot to this lick. All you're doing is fretting the D string and using a backward roll technique. As you saw in the demo, there's really just one single fretted note and all you're using again is a backward roll, which means uh, in terms of your picking hand, it's middle index thumb, middle index thumb. Now, we're playing a D minor scale, or we're taking notes from a D minor scale and using those for this lick, and that's, to me, what creates the mood. I've always loved minor keys because it feels like you're stepping into almost exotic territory. And minor scales, in and of themselves, I think, I think they lend themselves to composing solo guitar pieces or solo melodies on the guitar. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna take this lick and I'm just gonna go ahead and expand it and play a D minor scale using a backward roll. Now remember, this is drop D. So you're taking your low E string and dropping it down to a D note matching your true D string. Okay, so let me go ahead and play that minor scale on the, the natural D string and you can kind of see how this can be used as a compositional tool. Here's how it sounds. If you want to kind of put a cap on it, you can play that D minor chord. Okay, great, Tone. So I got all these notes to pick from. What do I do with them? Well, this lick is just quite simply a starting point. And I think this lick functions the best as a solo guitar piece. And you can really do any combination of those minor scale notes. You can do what's written.
or you can kind of take what's written and modify it to suit your own creative explorations. Which brings me to something I want to mention uh, before we get back to the Acoustic Tuesday show. And that is, you know, so often when we sit down and we, you want to learn something that's written, be it tablature or what have you, you think that the goal is to learn it note for note. And that, and that may be your goal. I don't want to, I don't want to throw shade on that because if you're, if you're aiming to learn something note for note, that's great. But I think where we get into trouble, where I've gotten into trouble in the past and where I've heard other guitar players get into trouble is that you chalk up learning something note for note as either a pass or a fail. Meaning if you learn it note for note, it's a pass. If you don't learn it note for note, it's a fail. That's not necessarily the healthiest approach. Um, there's so much gray area within your guitar journey. I would encourage you to embrace that gray area. If you're trying to learn something note for note and it takes you in a different direction, much like this lick may very well take you in a different direction, that's still a victory. That's still a success. It's still you exploring your musicality. So instead of having this rigid structure of, yes, I did it, no, I didn't, just try and enter your guitar playing session by saying, you know what? I'm gonna do my best to learn this thing that I wanna learn, but if it takes me in a different direction, I owe it to myself, I owe it to my, crea my creativity, I owe it to my guitar journey to follow that and see what kind of cool things I can stumble upon. Again, it's not pass fail, there's no right way, there's no wrong way, there's just showing up, playing guitar, and exploring what sounds good to your ear. Before I move on, I do have a question for you. What did you think of the new experimental Lesson Behind the Licks segment? Did it help your playing? Did it help your comprehension of the Tuesday Tack Guitar Lick Challenge? Go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Way back on episode 219 of the show, I had asked for your biggest small wins of 2021. Well, TAC family member Dustin spoke up, and his comment underscores just how powerful fun is in your guitar journey. Here's what he had to say. Hi and welcome everyone. Thanks for the great show. Looking back six months ago, I have to say, wow, I have played 126 sessions since July 4th of 2021. My three wins are, one, I overcame the fear of playing guitar, two, the fingers are working better together between both hands, and lastly, I feel more fun and more addicted to playing guitar than ever. Yup. The tweak for 2022 is playing and singing along with karaoke music, with friends, and of course, enjoying playing guitar more often. However, my wife is jealous with my guitar. Thanks, Tony, again, you brought me fun. Be nice and play guitar. I just, I, I'm really excited about Dustin's comment because it's very clear that he's enjoying his guitar journey. But what's most clear is that he's having fun and that fun is propelling him forward. That fun keeps him coming back for more and that fun is directly linked linked to his progress. So thank you so much, Dustin, for chiming in and cheers to an awesome guitar journey in 2022. Cheers to an awesome continuing guitar journey in 2022. Speaking of journeys, let's uh, head on over to New Britain, Connecticut. We're gonna go visit Daniel Wynn of New Britain, Connecticut and check out what's in his guitar arsenal. Here's what he has to say. I hope you don't mind a second bite of the apple. But since I submitted my guitar arsenal pick last year, my entire collection has changed over. And I now have an epic beard, but not as epic as yours. On the stands from left to right are a GNL Tribute S500, a Journey Instruments First Class Overhead FP412, thanks to your review, an Orangewood Duke Live Jumbo, a Gold Tone Soprano Guitar, or quote unquote Mando Guitar. This can be converted into a Tony Soprano Guitar by tuning, by tuning it to dropped F-bomb, and a GNL Tribute ASAT Junior II. In my hands is a custom made Cedar Lake Guitar. You can find its story in my video, The New Guitar Day with a Story in the Small Winds Forum within TAC. Guitar Geeks Unite. Daniel, thanks so much for sharing your guitar arsenal with us. Thanks so much for updating us with your guitar arsenal and of course, your epic beard. And if you wanna get featured just like Daniel did, here's how you do that. 
I wanna to propose to you a win-win-win scenario. I wanna feature you on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Yes, I wanna feature you and your guitar snow, or you and your Acoustic Tuesday merchandise. Step number one, go to tonypolacastro.com forward slash shop. Once you're there, pick out your favorite guitar snow shirt, your favorite Acoustic Tuesday merchandise, get it shipped directly to your door. Step number two, once your merchandise arrives, go ahead and put it on and take a picture of yourself, either just wearing Acoustic Tuesday merchandise, or if you have a guitar signal shirt, take a picture in front of all of your guitars. And then once you're done with that, step number three is to upload your picture at tonypolacastro.com forward slash shop. There's a link right on that page. Click it, you can upload your photo, and boom, you'll be featured in the Acoustic Tuesday show. Win number one, you get featured in the Acoustic Tuesday show. Win number two, you get some cool snazzy Guitar Geek merchandise. Win number three, the biggest win of them all, all proceeds from the TonyPolacastro.com forward slash shop are being donated to Guitars for Vets. You get featured in the show, you get cool new shirts, cool new merchandise, and you help out Guitars for Vets. Win, win, win. Okay, back to the show. It's time for acoustic news you can use, and have I got two amazing artists for you. One of them you have likely heard already if you watch the show, and the other is brand new. Brand new to me, and likely new to you as well. In fact, that's what we'll start out with. I want to introduce you to Christina Vane. Her last name is spelled V-A-N-E. And as I was surfing YouTube one day, I came upon a video by the folks at Western AF, who are amazing, by the way. You have to check out their work. And the video was entitled, hold on, Wishing Bone Blues. And I saw this picture of a resonator, a national cutaway resonator. I think it's a... I can't remember the exact model. Anyways, it's it's a cutaway resonator with a really cool finish, and I thought, I probably need to watch that video, and I am so happy that I did, because Christina Vane is amazing. And guess what? The song you're about to see, the song you're about to hear is, again, entitled Wishing Bone Blues, and she uses a drone string to great effect. Here's the video. <laughs> Next up is some news from my dear friend, Charlie Parr. Charlie just recently released a new video for his song, Blues for Whitefish Lake, 1975. First, I have to tell you this. This is my favorite song off of his new album. I feel like there is so much emotion poured into it and so, so many strong visuals that he gets out of his lyrics. It's just quite simply amazing. If you haven't heard the song, well, you actually will hear in a moment. But if you haven't heard it and you have the album, really sink into that song. It's, it's, it's a real dandy, and that's, that's really an understatement. It's a very powerful song. Well, he just released a video for that song. And as much as the lyrics drive visuals when you're listening to it, in my opinion, this video matches the visuals to a T. It's an awesome video, and I want you to see just a little part of it. Here it is right now. I can hear voices from above me On the steepest part of the bank 
and listen for the voice of my father in the midst of the pines. There is a bar at the top of the staircase hidden amongst the leaves. Concentrate on the face of my father. Concentrate on the last shirt I saw him wear. fishing boat at the dock mostly sunk into the mud the steps are all but gone now rotten to my tread I cling to branches to keep from slipping the rain is coming on Concentrate on never falling Concentrate on never climbing back down Did you happen to notice his use of drone strings? Yeah, now that you know about drone strings, you're going to start hearing them all over the place. And on those wonderful droney notes. I think it's a great time to wrap up the Acoustic Tuesday show for today. But before I do so, let's take a sneak peek into next week. And oh, next week is going to be a jumbo week. Yes, it's going to be a huge week next week on the Acoustic Tuesday show because I'm going to be digging into how the Gibson J200 changed the world. Yes, indeed, that's next week on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. right here on YouTube. One more thing before you go. Please remember that your guitar success, however you define it, is directly related to your guitar routine. So please invest the time in developing your guitar routine and make sure to have fun every single day that you play. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for being a guitar geek, and I'll see you next Tuesday on the acu- <laughs> I'll, see- <laughs> I'll see you next Tuesday on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Be nice and play guitar. Cheers. <laughs>